Hey y'all, welcome to Kamira's Kitchen. Today we're gonna be making an easy and creamy chicken curry that your whole family is going to love. Now I have already started out by skinning and also cutting in half with a cleaver five chicken thighs. I have the bone in because I really want the flavor, but if you want to use skinless, boneless, you can. I would just leave make them large chunks. Now I'm putting in three tablespoons of whole milk yogurt as well as all of my spices. I'll be using a combination of ginger, curry powder, cumin, cayenne pepper, chicken bouillon, garlic, as well as onion powder. And I will put all those in the description box. Of course, you must add some fresh ginger and some fresh garlic to a chicken curry. That really makes the gravy taste amazing, as well as some salt to penetrate that meat. Now, if you have already been enjoying this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I post new videos weekly. I'm gonna allow this chicken to marinate at room temperature for 30 minutes because I don't want it to become cold um, when I put it into this hot pan. I've heated my braising pan on a medium heat and I'm adding in some ghee. Now ghee is clarified butter and has a delicious nutty flavor, but you could also use coconut oil. Into this warm oil, I'm adding half a teaspoon of cumin, two cardamom pods, and some cinnamon. Allow it to toast and flavor that oil for just about 20 to 30 seconds, no longer because you don't want it to burn, and then add in one whole large diced onion. You're gonna allow this onion to saute with these spices and the oil for about two to three minutes until it starts to brown. At this point, the flavor and the aroma is going to be crazy in your kitchen. I promise it will smell so delicious and you will be ready for this curry. This is where you're really starting to develop all the flavor. Add a little bit more oil because we don't want our chicken to stick too badly. Now this is where all of the essential flavor for a curry is developed. You really need to toast the chicken and the meat and let it get a little bit brown because the spices are going to start to bloom in that warm oil. I know some people are afraid of this because they see that dark fawn developing at the bottom of their pan, but you actually need that to get the essential rich flavor in a curry. I allow this to cook undisturbed for about four minutes at a medium heat. Then I'm gonna go in and start to turn the chicken. As you can see, parts of it has started to brown. In order to loosen up the fond at the bottom, I'm gonna put the lid on this chicken for about three minutes and medium low to allow it to release some of its juices. Then you're gonna see that the bottom fond is going to release relatively easily. That flavor is essential. So I'm going in with my um, spatula and I'm just gonna get all of that up and mix everything together. Okay, doing this step is what's going to separate a okay curry from a magnificent, delicious, you know, I want to lick in my lips curry, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I cut two carrots into large pieces for my vegetable, but you could also use potato or even butternut squash is really good in this and that will kind of dissolve in the curry a bit. I just saute it for about a minute to allow it to warm up in all the spices. Add some water to your marination bowl. I put in about two cups or so, but honestly, I didn't measure. And this is the water we're gonna put into the dish. Of course, you wanna use that marination bowl because no flavor is going to be left behind, okay? Now, I don't put too much water in it because I don't want my chicken to be swimming, okay? I don't want it to be stroking, okay? I just want enough water so that the chicken is covered just a little bit. I'm actually going to just use this to cook the chicken, but allow it to reduce a little bit while it cooks because I want the sauce to be relatively thick. And since I'm adding in the coconut milk, that's gonna add the extra gravy that you want. So right now, you're just focused on cooking the chicken and the carrots and concentrating the flavor. I allow the chicken to cook for about 20 minutes until it was nice and tender and my gravy was reduced. And then I went in with my coconut milk. Now this particular brand, Arrow D, is my favorite brand of coconut milk. And no, this is not sponsored by them, but this coconut milk really tastes the closest that I've ever had to making the fresh coconut milk with the real coconut. And so I'm putting in about one cup of this, but add as much as you like to get the flavor and the amount of gravy that you prefer. 
if you can find this brand, I do recommend it. And you can typically get it from your local Asian mart. I had some frozen peas left over and I wanna use that up because I do not like food waste. This is about half a cup and I'm just gonna mix these in. You just wanna allow the peas to defrost and cook for about four minutes in the curry to get that flavor in them. Now to serve this, I actually made some black rice, which you can also find at your Asian Mart in my pressure cooker. I also served this with some extra vegetables, some cauliflower, just to ensure that I was getting all my veggies in. And I truly enjoy this meal. And the best thing about curry is that it tastes even better the next day. So for meal prep, this is an excellent recipe. I hope you guys try this recipe and know that I love you and Jesus loves you. And I'll see you next time in Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye, guys.